Crazy. Switching to basketball, I saw a a meme. A meme. I got a meme here that I put in my stack and I've lost. That said that uh, I think in 2027, Luka Doncic is going to be avail- or, uh, eligible to sign an extension. And he's going to be, if he gets the max, which he definitely will, I mean, by all accounts, he's going to be making $80 million per season. Per season, first player in NBA history at that point. I mean, there's a lot to shake out in between now and 2027, but I saw that number and it just blew my mind. That is just an absurd amount of money. I mean, I guess as an economist, if you're looking at it from that point of view, he's worth it, but he's going to be making $80 million a year and the rest of the team or the rest, you know, they're not going to have any money for any of the rest of the players. Is he even going to stay in Dallas? Is he will? Is he just going to be willing to make that kind of money and never have a chance to compete? Or will they figure out a way to let him compete? Well, well let's look at the roster this year and see what they got. I was just going to say, putting it in Blazers' terms, is he going to sign that $80 million a year contract and then the next year demand to go play for some other team? You know, you, you have that to look forward to, Dallas fans. Sorry to bust your bubble, but uh, that's what we're dealing with. Well, I don't know. I think that Dallas has an interesting roster and an interesting future ahead. You're probably right. It is interesting. Like, who knows what he's going to do by then? But I think everything doesn't start around Luka. I mean, it starts around Luka, but the main guy that we got to focus on on what's going to happen is Kyrie. What is Kyrie going to get up to next? What kind of <laughs> shenanigans is he going to get up to? Is his third eye going to be open from the start or is he going to close it for now and then open it when things aren't going away? Uh, I think Kyrie's a really talented player, but do you guys think that the long-term pairing of Kyrie and Luca is going to work? We knew it as soon. Me and Riley both said as soon as it happened that there was no way that was going to work. And there were some people that looked at us sideways, including you. Don't deny it. You looked at us sideways. You thought, no way. Kyrie Irving, superstar player. He's going to bring a lot to the team. And they completely flamed out at the end of last year. They had a terrible uh, end of the season. A lot of drama kept losing games, eventually tanked their way out of the playoffs because they knew there was no no way that they were going to do any damage in the playoffs. I don't think that pairing works. I don't think it was going to work before the trade happened. I don't think it was like a a misfire or anything like that or uh, something that should have worked and that didn't work. I think from the start, it was doomed. I don't see any way that it's going to resolve itself. It's just two players that don't work together very well. They both need the ball in their hands to be effect- their most effective. Um, if they figure out a way to play together this year, it would astonish me, but I have been wrong in the past. So it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, I, d- I don't see it working. Just like I didn't see it working when they first announced that it, there was a possibility of it happening. It's just two players who are both not only do they need the ball in their hands they just so have to be the star of the show and the focus of the entire team in a lot of ways they kind of do the same thing they both do they really slow down the game in a way you know I know Kyrie's quick but he kind of slows down the game he brings the ball across half court he like you know lulls people to sleep does some crazy moves gets into his iso and Luca is just standing there like what you know what am I going to do like he's not going to go in there and like crash boards necessarily or anything like that. They don't complement each other in any way. And that's the that's the real problem is that not only do they kind of do the same thing and not only do they both need the ball, but they just don't complement each other at all. Like Luca doesn't bail out Kyrie when he gets in some kind of a, you know, jam and vice versa. So the only thing that would be worse is the rumor that's kind of been floating around since about July of Dallas potentially sending Tim Hardaway Jr. in some kind of package to try to get Harden. As you can can you imagine we add Harden to this to this mess? You I add a third, a third player. 
Oh, it's it's a, a quick Google shows you there's plenty of articles in the Dallas press about Dallas trying to go out and get James Harden to to team up with Luca and Kyrie because that would be the the panacea, the cure all to the problem. You know, add someone else who gets 90 free throws in a FIBA tournament like Luca did, you know, slow the game down even more. Well, I thought Kyrie or I thought Kyrie and Harden didn't get along in Brooklyn, so I doubt they do that. Uh, but yeah, I, I get what you guys are saying. I will say that Kyrie did succeed. I'm not saying Luca is LeBron in his prime level, but he was a ball dominant big point guard basically that coexisted with Kyrie and they won a title. But yeah, I think that there's some definitely definite overlap in their play. I figured Kyrie was at or slightly exceeding Jalen Brunson's skill level last time we talked. And that, you know, that has shown that that's kind of an interesting topic because Jalen Brunson, while he wasn't that great in the FIBA tournament, you know, he had a good season and it's interesting. I, I, I'm still not ready to completely write him off yet and say it's not going to work, but yeah, you guys are definitely right. There's definitely some issues there. It's going to be interesting to see how how they move forward around that duo. I don't think Kyrie has a lot of trade value just because of his mannerisms and his Kyrie-ness, for lack of a better term. Um, but I do think that there were some interesting moves they made in the offseason around those guys. Um, they're, they're tanking that you mentioned, Kirby. They were able to draft Derek Lively. They desperately needed a center this whole time. They're cursed to start Dwight Powell for all of eternity. I feel like, you know, Mavericks fans would probably know what I'm talking about, but Derek Lively has a lot of potential as a center coming in. They added Grant Williams. That was a pretty good move over from Boston. Our uh, Blazer legends, Derek Jones Jr. and Greg Brown are going to have a dunk contest going on in practice with those two guys. So adding players. Greg Brown. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're adding players that are interesting uh, they added Seth Curry. I mean, we can go down the list and talk about all of them. They still have promising young guys like Josh Green and they already and Jalen Hardy. Um, so yeah, it's interesting, interesting influx of players. Dallas is just an interestingly constructed team in general, in my opinion. I'm actually not very impressed with what they did this offseason. Uh Derek Lively was a good to point him out. I hadn't really thought about him. He if he pans out at all, he will be desperately needed and uh, could end up being a big draft pick for them. But the rest of the guys that they added, just not that impressive. Not big needle movers, in my opinion. Grant Williams, Seth Curry. I like Seth. Yeah, I like Seth too, but uh, I don't know. They played together in Brooklyn. And I guess you could say, you know, at times it worked out, maybe, but we'll see how that works out in, in Dallas. And then the Blazers legends you mentioned are, ugh, man, that's uh, just roster filler, in my opinion. Like, I don't think either one of those guys is going to be bringing anything to the table that's going to make them put them in contention, which is obviously what they need to be doing right now if they want to convince Luca to stay they need to be competing for an in, you know a championship and this roster I don't think even comes close yeah and I mean I think that there there's a real risk that they make a stupid move to try to keep Luca happy I mean that's where you run into that like bring in a third superstar that doesn't really fit kind of a problem you know um I mean what <laughs> We kind of thought about this. We talked about this even when they brought in Kyrie, like to try to make Luca happy. But honestly, would you rather have Jalen Brunson, Luca Doncic, and Tim Hardaway, or Kyrie, Luca, and Harden? I mean, I think Brunson and and Tim Hardaway are a better fit around him than just packing the team with ball dominant superstars that you know, or former superstars. I don't even know that you can really when, when's the last time Kyrie did anything to help a team win games you know it's it, just because it's a big name doesn't mean that it's going to help your team and they I think that they were better situated when they were trying to build a team around Luca than they are trying to just like pack it with names to try to make him think that they're making big swings to win 
it's it's always the it's always the trouble when you're trying to build a team around a superstar it's something blazer fans have dealt with for a long time now you know just trying to go after names doesn't mean wins they did make the western conference finals two years ago with that team that you mentioned and i like that strategy more as well you you know we're able to put luca at the point guard position and kind of have a big team uh, full of shooters around him. They had uh, Finney Smith, who has uh, sh- proven himself to be a good 3 and D player. Um, if they could have added a few more players like that, maybe got a Derek Lively type piece to add with that and had a real legitimate center rim protector sort of player. Um, big 3 and D players around Luca. I like that configuration for this team much more than, like you said, the – names with uh the good iso players can break down a defense by themselves but aren't really proven to be the best ball movement type of uh players well i think they were kind of trying to do that as well i think grant williams they view as like three and d Derek jones jr is more all d no three and <laughs> even the d isn't locked down uh they drafted oliver uh max and prosper as well in the first round and Olivia. Just, yeah so yeah I didn't, Olivia. Pronounce, it. I didn't pronounce it right but my stands he's supposed to be a wing you know defense prospect so I think that they're trying uh you know Maxi as well he's shown defense in the past and while yeah, like- you know, not the most athletically charged player he still uh, competes on defense when he, and he got hurt last year I believe so yeah, there is there is defense there on the roster, but I, I I agree with you guys in terms of does the top end talent fit well enough, and does everything else mesh down the line? I'm not sure. I don't think that Mavericks fans should want to trade players like Josh Green. I was um, going to bring and Jalen Hardy for a star like what you're saying, like Harden, definitely not because those guys actually have potential, and I think Derek Lively has potential. But are those guys? going to gel fast enough to make Luca happy and is Luca going to change some of his tendencies namely getting back on defense and not complaining to the referees every single play how'd that go in the FIBA tournament yeah he got ejected and it wasn't even FIBA calls it differently than the NBA you're not getting that call in FIBA it was a pretty soft no call you know no call uh, and he got ejected, and he wasn't, you know, not getting back on defense. Those things go together. Is he going to fix that ever? How old is he at this point? He's He's been young. He's been in the league forever, it I seems like. He's still, still only young. 24 years old. Yeah. So he is a, a young kid still trying to figure it out, I suppose. But, yeah, it's, it's becoming that time that he needs to take, take yeah. the next step and mature a little bit. Um, you brought up Josh Green. I like him. I think that's a a player that could really help this team. Um, one of the bright spots from last year, I believe. Um, Grant Williams as well. Uh, I kind of said that I wasn't that impressed with his signing, but at least he's a low maintenance uh, player by all accounts and a, a tough guy, um, good shooter defender could end up helping him out and Tim Hardaway hopefully he can stay healthy this year it seems like he's kind of been through the ringer with injuries over the last few years although I guess he's played 70 games three of the last four seasons so maybe not quite as much as I'm making it out to be but it's about one injury I think with him okay yeah, yeah. so do you guys think that that team is, I guess Riley's already kind of given his answer, but with Colton, do you think that those additions and filling out the roster a little bit more around Kyrie and, and Luca, do you think they'll be able to make a run in the playoffs this year? Or do you think it's going to be a play-in tournament <laughs> kind of a season for them? I'm not really a fan of Jason Kidd. I haven't really been since his Milwaukee days. Brooklyn days, some stuff he said, or his New Jersey days. I can't remember if he was the coach during Brooklyn or New Jersey, but some of the stuff that's come out has really alienated me about kind of how he's a coach, as a coach. Uh, 
and his, you know, his personal life and whatever. But um, we'll see what it looks like in training camp. I don't think that they have a ceiling as constructed as like a top four seed. Um, I think that their ceiling is like the fifth seed in the West. Um, and that's if everything goes right. And if Kyrie comes in and he's on the straight and narrow path and, you know, the kind of defenders that they brought in come in, Lively comes in and provides center depth around Powell and Kleba. So I think that their ceiling is the fifth seed and their floor is like, if the Kyrie, you know, situation blows up and Luca's getting frustrated and he gets 16 technicals halfway through the season and he's going to get suspended for games here and there because he keeps getting technicals, they could find themselves in the play-in. Definitely. Uh, Maybe as like the ninth seed or the 10th. I mean, even 10th, depending on how competitive the West is. I think there's only about three teams that I would peg as probably not going to compete for a playoff spot this year. And Portland is one of them along with San Antonio. I mean, if they come together um, and Utah, Utah might even compete. You don't know. So, the West is stacked again. Is it, last year, last year it was fun to watch. Basically, every team in the West, uh, except for the Spurs, were competing for playoff spots until maybe the All Star break. The Rockets. Oh yeah, yeah. Like thirteen, a thirteen, twelve or thirteen team race for most of the year, and then there was a few that kind of decided to. Uh, uh, who was that? Who was one of those teams that decided to go all in on the captain? The ten- be the be the epic tank commander. Hey, guys, Riley, what it do you, gives you Scoot Henderson? What what do you guys think about their ceiling and their floor? Yeah, Riley, I was gonna ask you, what do you think their ceiling and their floor is? Yeah, I mean what Colton, we, as you went through that, there was a lot of ifs just to try to get to about the fifth spot. And that's not really a very exciting place to be if I'm a Dallas fan, honestly. <laughs> like if Kyrie comes in with a good attitude and wants to play basketball. If Luca grows up a little bit, you know, and figures out how to like be an NBA player and, a, and an adult, I mean, it was a it was a lot cuter when you were twenty, kid. But you know, you're in your mid twenties now. <laughs> you're running out of time. Oh, you're, you're just you're running out of time on on growing up. You know, I mean, oh. people people are willing to give it a lot more deference when you're really young. But it's just it's getting to that point now where the the like defeatist attitude a lot of people have called that out when things are going bad his body language just looks terrible his shoulders slump he stops talking to his teammates he starts letting the coach just like yell at him without responding it's it's not a good look and it's definitely something that he's needed to work on for a long time and i haven't really seen it improve that much but anyway even if all of those ifs panned out, burn. even even if Kyrie was great and Doncic was great, that's a lot of talent. But you still have a six ten center and a six six power forward. You're missing a lot of size in the front court and a, and some talent in the front court too. I think Grant Williams is a fine player, but he's kind of small for a power forward. And if you're gonna have him play power forward, I think you have to pair it with a pretty legitimate center. And Dwight Powell's a little small, so they need like Derek Lively to come on hard and you know ready to go as a seven-one center within a year or two if they want to keep Luca happy. If if the guy's even capable of being happy, wow! It feels like Maxi starts by the way if he comes back healthy. Yeah, I was gonna about to say that this team sort of reminds me the way they're constructed of like a they remind me in ways of the Blazers, very guard dominant, but they brought this kind of upon themselves rather than just through the fortune of the draft. (laughs) That's been the case with the Blazers the last couple of years. Um, It feels to me like Hardaway could be the odd man out potentially. I mean, I guess he could be a floor spacer for them, but if they're having Luca and Kyrie out there, they're, probably have to surround them with some size and defense because neither one of those guys are known for their lockdown defense. And I kind of feel like Grant Williams could be getting a lot of minutes at the three more than the the four. And like you said, Colton Kleba is probably likely to slot into that four four spot. So Hardaway could kind of be the odd man out during certain lineups when they're not just trying to outscore 
the other team. Um, I like Luca, even though he has those issues, those maturity issues, and he whines and complains and everything. He is fun to watch. And since he came in the league, he's been, you know, a lightning rod as far as just excitement and exciting basketball plays, putting up huge stats. Um, but it's it's getting to that point in his career where he's going to have to take that next step and become like a legitimate MVP candidate. And he's going to have to do that by making the rest of his team better and not just dominating the stat sheet, stuffing the, the stat sheet. So if he can do that, if he can make this team really good, put not just by putting them on his back, but by elevating everyone else, then I can see them potentially getting to the second round. I don't really see them getting much further than that. And if he doesn't, if he doesn't elevate the team both on and off the floor and Kyrie has those issues, like you guys outlined very clearly how this could go bad for them. I mean, it could be another year of where they decide to tank. They could be in that Portland situation where they realize that this isn't going anywhere this year and that they'd be better served by just sitting their their guys and uh, trying to get the best draft pick they can possibly get. So it's a mixed bag for them. But I, I hope that Luca does take that next step because if he does reach that level of maturity and figure out how to start making his team better and not just play for the stats and the, the moments that he's had, then, man, he could be – one of the all-time greats pretty easily. I think really quick, the secret to that is learning a little bit how to play off ball. I think that if he's able to just work on his catch and shoot, I mean, he's not a bad shooter in those uh, streaky, streaky moments. He's a streaky shooter, but I think that if he's able to learn to play off ball, let Kyrie do his thing, sometimes play off of it, don't have those extraordinarily high, Westbrookian usage rates, then you could see some of his team not only develop with the young players, but gel better as more people get more touches rather than um, shot clock cheese, where he'll dribble for 22 seconds, kick it out for the assist, and he'll get an assist, but everybody stood on the floor watching Luka Magic rather than everybody getting a touch involved, that kind of thing. So I think that's the key that and getting back on defense and not complaining every time. It's too bad he can't do a step back three off the catch and shoot because his percentages would probably increase a lot. And he'd be a, a dominant off ball shooter in that situation. Yeah, I Dallas mean, fan. Oh, so go ahead, brother. I was just going to say, I love, I love the way that Luca controls the pace of the game and controls the flow of the game. I just need to see the guy grow up a little. I'm sure Dallas fans are hoping for that too. A little bit of maturity from their guy could go a long way for them. Be sure to let us know down in the comments what you thought of our takes on your team this week and what you guys are expecting from the team and what your hopes and your prayers are. Thanks, everyone, for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.